Hello everyone, I am Nun. I'll be presenting the paper on Samuel Genetic Programming that was developed in cooperation with Jean Baptiste and Sarah Silva. So, um, our inspiration for this paper came from the fact that the state of the art in Samuel methods, such as random forest and XG boost, have over the years put out very good results that are far better than the ones produced by standard genetic programming. However, they have the problem which is there is a need to fine tune their parameters in order to prevent overfitting, which is something that genetic programming does not suffer. So we had a very clear objective, which was to develop an ensemble-based genetic programming method that could gather all the advantages from ensemble learning, but without the need to fine tune the parameters. And of course, we need to compare results, so we chose two different baselines. An ensemble baseline composed from random, function, random forest and XGBoost, and a genetic programming baseline composed from standard genetic programming and then 3 gp I'll be mentioning M3GP quite a bit during this presentation, so I'm just going to give a quick rundown of what it is. It is a very strong genetic programming algorithm used for a multi-class classification that uses multi-dimensional tree structures. Uh, what this means is that instead of, have, uh, instead of the, the, st the structures being standard genetic programming trees, they are composed by a dummy node, and attached to that dummy node, there can be multiple trees. And this works by having three different uh, genetic operators, which can either swap or remove these subtrees. So for ensemble genetic programming, or AGP, we have two different populations. We have trees and forests. Trees are essentially the same as genetic, standard genetic programming trees, while forests are aggregations or ensembles of trees that work in a similar way to M3GP. So uh, upon creation, each tree is assigned a unique bag of subsamples. And this bay can be created by either one of two forms. So it can have uh, random sets of 60% of samples, all features included, or it can have random sets of one to all samples and one to all features. As for fitness functions, our trees use the root mean square error, and our forests use an accuracy that is calculated based on either a majority voting or a weighted voting produced by the, sub the, the trees that compose the forest. Uh, for genetic operators, forests again are similar to m 3 so they use the, the three genetic operators. While trees needed two new operators in order to respect the integrity of the bags that they have. So uh, we devised a crossover and immutation. Uh, in immutation, the newly generated subtree needs to only contain uh, features that are uh, in the bag of the parent. Now in e-crossover, which is a bit more tricky, after swapping the subtrees, each parent will look at the received subtree and compare the features it received to the features that are in its bag. And it will replace the analog features by the most similar ones by the means of cosine similarity. So we can say that uh, AGP is a co-evolutionary, cooperative and compositional system since we have uh, two different populations uh, that are trying to produce a more robust model. So we start by pre-processing the data. So we split the data set into a training and test set. And we devise our bags of samples from the training data set. And then we initialize both populations. So we create the trees, assigning them their own unique bag. And then we create the forest and assign them a forest. And this scenario, it does not need to be a unique, uh, create the forest by assigning them a, a different tree. It does not need to be a unique tree. So uh, multiple forests can be associated to the same tree. Uh, we then proceed to evaluate both populations and we perform selection and breeding on both of them and we end up with uh, our best forest model. So we tested 10 different algorithms. So both our two GP baselines, so G standard GP and NTGP, our ensemble baselines, random forest and XGBoost, and six variations of EGP that have uh, different subsampling techniques, different voting methods, and different population sizes. We tested these algorithms in eight different binary classification problems with various numbers of features and samples. So here we have a table that highly condenses the results we obtained. And what this table gives us is the number of times each algorithm was significantly better than the others. So what can we conclude? Uh, we can conclude that um, EGP is better than standard genetic programming. It outperformed genetic, program standard genetic programming in all the, the problems except for uh, one. 
Uh, but however, it is still worse than both ensemble methods and M3GP. Uh, another good find was that M3GP is better than forests, which is unexpected. But uh, then, uh, as expected, XGBoost was the best performing method overall. However, there is a, a very interesting find. So on the gametes problem, which is a, was a the hardest problem we tested, which is a, which is a simulated genome-wide associated studies that I said, with 1,000 features and 1,600 samples. Our EGP with feature selection was able to outperform all other classifiers in the test data. So here you have uh, an image which contains 10 sections, in one for each algorithm. And inside each section, we have two box plots, one for training data and one for testing data. Testing data is the one on the right. So as we can see, uh, which is highlighted or encapsulated, we have uh, well, they are statistically they are outliers, but uh, as we can see, they are the only models that can produce these outliers, which have an accuracy of around 80 ish percent, which is far above the, the the one the accuracy of the other methods. So, what do we still need to do? We still need to discover why EGP is underperforming and is being worse than a forest and XC boost, and we can do this by trying different sampling techniques, voting schemes, or evolutionary parameters. We need to find out or understand why EGP is able to achieve such good results in the gametes data set. And we can do this by further exploring the models that produce those results. And we need to extend EGP for multi-class classification and regression problems. And when doing so, we need to see if the positions are maintained on that ranking table we showed a few slides back. So um, thank you for listening. Okay, thank you. Thank you again for your talk. Nuno, uh, we are ready for questions. Okay, we have the first question is from Douglas Diaz. So the question is, uh, did you consider using multi-gene genetic programming? Uh, no, uh, we did not consider. Uh, I, I'm, I'm can be another thing to try in the future work, but we do not consider this, this problem. Okay, thank you. Let's see if, uh, meanwhile, we are looking for the next speaker. Um, let's see if other questions arise. Uh, okay, we have another question from Bill Langdon. So the question is, is in bioinformatics often genes are features more interesting to users than accuracy? So uh, this, this might be an interpretation of the result you observed on the, um, let's say, game, game test uh, data set. What's your comment on this? That, that is in fact true. We have we have some findings. We can still not share them, but uh, we are finding some interesting results regarding the the genes that, uh, as I said, are the features. And we still don't know what we are finding. We can we cannot say clearly what it is, but we have some interesting results that we are eager to uh, publish in the future. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Bill say you answered. Thank you. Uh, let's wait another couple of seconds to see if we have other questions. Meanwhile, I re-ask again if the next speaker is ready to present. Otherwise, Ting, uh, please prepare the machinery for playing the recording. Yes, I don't think... Okay, and maybe we have the next speaker. Um, okay, perfect. So, um, no other questions. So, thank you again, Nuno, for the presentation. And thank you. Very uh, much. Let's go to the next speaker. Thank you.